back to Erica with Rosie Research, and this month we have a great mummification lab. It's perfect for Halloween, and if you get started right away, you will have your mummy by Halloween. It took us about three weeks to make this mummy. We got it as a Cornish hen out of our frozen section, and this month we have all of our great things. We have all of our parent guides. We have how to connect all of the science to real life with your kids, and we have ideas on how to scale the science all the way from you know, pre-K all the way to grades four and five. So you can get these downloads along with all of our add-on activities. So I always make all these add-on activities. Don't forget, it's not just the lab. Um, you can get all of these in your folder that was in your download kit. If you don't have the download kit but you're interested in the curriculum, you can get it online either at rosyresearch.com slash shop or you can become a subscriber to all of our labs and get them as they come out at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. So this month we have our mummy mystery and um, basically a man finds a chicken mummy in his backyard and he thinks it's the lost chicken of King Tut and that this mummy was in King Tut's tomb. And so your kids, you and your kids will get to make your own chicken mummy and of course when we get mummies and we want to know how old mummies are, we have to do something called carbon dating. And you'll have a chance to carbon date with your child hands-on in your own house, which is really, really fun. And we'll see whether Rosie's mummy that she carbon dates is either from sort of this day and age or maybe it was from the ancient Egyptians. And then you'll also get to see that about your mummy. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to make your mummy. And we have the instructions for you on how to make a mummy. And it's pretty simple. You're going to get a Cornish hen. These are found in sort of the frozen goods section. Um, it was not in the regular refrigerated section. So you can find frozen Cornish hens. You want the smallest one you can find. So the larger of a Cornish hen or a chicken that you're going to get, the longer it's going to take for that to dry out for you. So if you want it to go really, really fast, get something really small. Um, even I think quails are even smaller if you have those in your local supermarkets. And so you'll need your chicken or your bird, and you're going to need a lot of baking soda and a lot of salt. So if you have a Costco membership, get you know the four-pound box of each. Um, if you don't, try to get the biggest boxes you can because you're going to need a lot of those. The two of those mixed together actually make something very similar to what the ancient Egyptians used called natron. And the baking soda helps the smell a little bit. The salt is what's going to help your smell the most. You might be sitting there on the other side of your screen freaking out that you're going to have the most smelly kitchen all month long. And we have, I suggest, just double ziplocking your bag. Once it's double ziplocked, you really can't smell it too much. Part of the reason why that is, is because as we're drying our chicken out, we're also drying everything out that's on our chicken. So bacteria that would normally eat chicken as it's rotting and sort of start smelling it up as it was farting everything it ate out, that's no longer there because it can't survive in such a high salt concentration environment. Now when you make your mummy, you want to, and you're stuffing it, so you're going to mix in a Ziploc bag about a pound of salt and maybe a half a pound of baking soda. And once you're mixing this, you also want to, you're going to dry off your chicken, you're going to rub it with some rubbing alcohol that's going to kill a lot of stuff inside and out, and then you want to dry it as much as you can inside and out. That just makes it so that your first round with the salt and drying it does as much as possible. It's not just doing it instantly and then you need to change it. So when you do it, you're going to take your chicken and you're going to pack it in. So you're going to stuff that salt and that baking soda mix into your chicken, just like it was a stuffing mix. And then you'll fill the bag with sort of about the rest of whatever that pound of baking soda or a pound of salt and half a pound of baking soda is. You'll put your chicken in the Ziploc bag and you'll sort of just get it all on top of it, tie your Ziploc bag, and put that in a second one. Now we changed ours about three or four days later for the first one, and it had already lost about four ounces of its water weight, which is pretty significant considering it started off at about 32 ounces total. So it had already lost more than 10% of its weight in water, and so we changed it right away after about four days, and that gives you more salts that can dry it even faster. So the more often you're changing this salt outside of about three to four days, um, the faster it's going to dry. So we did about four days for the first one, and then a week, and another week, 
And the last week we found out it didn't lose any more water when we weighed it after we had taken the salt off. And that sort of told us that our mummy was done. Now once your mummy is done, you get to have a nice fun celebration. We got gauze, we wrapped our chicken. So I wrapped the chicken first, and every time that we handled the chicken, I let my girls handle the chicken, but they needed gloves on. So that was the rule, and you're gonna wanna do that with your kids too. But everybody should be wearing gloves when they handle the chicken. But I wrapped the first roll of gauze around, and then it was sort of safe for them to handle. So then the girls could practice wrapping, and that was really fun for them. They wrapped some rosemary underneath. They dotted some lemon and some lavender oils on it. And then we made it, uh, painted it, and we've got this. And I think, you know, at some point, if we have a little more time this month, we might go back with hot glue guns and jewels and add all sorts of things to this mummy. They've had a wonderful time doing this mummy. So that is the first part of making your mummy. Now every time you, you uh, change your salt and your baking soda mix, you're going to want to weigh it because over in your lab you have a mummy shrink chart. And so you can look at how much does it weigh with how many days that you've been drying it. And then it asks you to sort of think about, do you think the mummy is going to dry out at the same speed the whole time? So will it be linear? Will it dry out really quickly at the end, but really slowly at the beginning? So will it be quadratic? Or will it dry out really quickly in the beginning and then sort of taper off at the end, which would be exponential? Now, you can just guess whatever you want to guess. That's what a lot of scientists do. We start with a guess, and then as you mummify your chicken, you're going to plot your points on the graph. So then you'll find out what it's going to be. And if you're wrong on your guess, that's totally fine. That happens all the time. We're always wrong in science. It takes a lot of wrongs to get it right. So your kids are probably going to ask you one of the first questions my daughter asked me was, why does the mummy dry out? And so that brought up osmosis for us. And I created this fun dice and penny game. And so you'll have pennies in all of these blue circles. And this is the salt that you packed around your mummy. Now you can roll your dice and that's the number of moves you get to do. And you'll notice when you're doing this, you have to sort of move out the outside pennies first before the inside pennies can start to move out. And that's exactly, exactly how drying happens in your chicken. It's gonna dry from the outside first and then the water from the very inside is gonna pull out to the outside and that's how that part's gonna get dried. So that's sort of a fun game. There's a little bit of a strategy because every time the salt gets all filled up, you change the salt so that whoever gets to change the salt keeps the pennies. So you try to always you know, finish with your penny as the last one to fill up the salt, which is kind of a fun little strategy addition to that. So that talks about a little bit about osmosis. And then, of course, we talked about how old our mummies are going to be. And we have a separate video about how to make your carbon dating equipment, but I want to talk about it really quickly as we talk about the lab as a whole. So carbon dating looks at two types of carbon. There is carbon-14, which is really, really heavy, and it's in all of us. It's in the atmosphere, it's in trees, it's in everything around you. Now, living things, we get our carbon-14 by breathing it in and by kind of being in contact with the Earth. Once we die, we don't make any more carbon-14. And carbon-14 actually decays. So a particle will come in and it'll change carbon-14 into nitrogen, and then that carbon-14 is gone forever. We don't get it back. Now the other type of carbon is very, very normal. That's called carbon-12. Now there's about a trillion more carbon-12s out there for every single carbon-14 that you're gonna find. So it's a really big difference. And so every time you lose some carbon-14, we can kind of see that. And we use that to date, so we look at how much carbon-14 is there compared to how much carbon-12 is there. And we know how long it takes that carbon-14 to decay into nitrogen. It takes about 5,500 years for it to go from 100 pieces of carbon-14 maybe to 50. So that's called a half-life. And so what we have to, to kind of mimic um, how people find, the, how people do the carbon dating, they do it in something called a mass spectrometer. So now the carbon-14 is a little heavier than the carbon-12, and so if you kind of fling it against something, it curves a little more slowly. And so when they go into a spectrometer, 
they kind of separate from each other, one from the other, and you can look at sort of the mass of one and the mass of the other. What we're going to do is we're going to build a mass spectrometer that works with pennies and nickels. Now when you do this, you can grab a random amount of pennies and a random amount of nickels. The only thing you want to make sure is that you have more pennies than nickels. Okay, so, and you'll have a little ramp and the coins will roll down on their sides on this little ramp and they'll hit a blow dryer. And the nickels, which are heavier, just like carbon-14, travel a little further before they hit a wall, whereas the pennies, which are a little lighter, don't travel as far. So then you can count up your number of pennies, and you can count up your number of nickels, and you can take that ratio, and you can look on our handy-dandy chart here. So let's say it was a one-to-one -one ratio. That would mean there's the same number of pennies as there are nickels. Well, something like that would be modern day. That would be today. So that's not a real mummy. If you had maybe 10% of nickels and 90% of pennies, it would be something that's very, very old. We could look over here at point 0.1 as our fraction and bring it down, and you're looking at maybe 17,000 years old. So you can, so you're going to divide your number of nickels by your number of pennies, and that fraction is what you read off the chart. So if I have 0.5 as my fraction, I'm going to read across here, and then once I hit the chart, I'm going to just drop straight down, and that will give me what my mummy is. And we've got sort of all these sorts of periods that date back. So is your mummy modern day? Is it, you know, sort of old? In 5,000 years ago was our first evidence of mummies. Is it older than that during early agriculture or domesticated livestock? So there's a lot of sort of fun learning you can talk about even on just this chart. And then they have a little spot to circle how old their mummy was, and then also how old Rosie's was. So you'll notice here there's a pink one, and this is what Rosie got as her reading. And so she finds that it's modern day, it's maybe only 10, 50 years old. So this is not a real mummy that Rosie found, but that doesn't mean the mummy that you guys find, that you guys make, isn't the lost mummy of King Tut. You'll have to see how many nickels and pennies you have. And this month we have a ton of fun add-on activities. So I'm going to be going over those in other videos for you guys. So make sure that you watch the playlist. Anytime you see this sort of watch Dr. Erica on YouTube, that means we have a helper video for you. So if you're getting stuck on something on either the add-on activities or in the lab, check for that little icon and see. Because if there is, you can watch me and we'll, we'll go through it together. Thanks so much for joining us for this month's Halloween activities. It is so much fun. Your kids are going to absolutely love it. My girls were completely enamored. They love their mummy so much, and they learned so much from all of our activities that we did this month. We would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to do more fun kids science with us. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and support us on Patreon by getting our labs every month as they come out. And that's at patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.